Hey guys, the objective of this video is to understand an undrained example using the effective stress analysis. We're going to do that by finding the change in the pore water pressure, which is equal to the change in the mean stress. We can then go ahead and find the change in the effective stress in the x, y, and z direction, and then we can find the strains in the x, y, and z direction. So as you can see, it's the exact same example we did before. We had all of these stresses equaling 100 kPa, and then they're increased and decreased at different in, def, in different directions. So the first thing we need to do is, because we're doing an effective stress analysis, we're going to have to find the effective, stre effective stress changes. But to first do that, we're going to have to find the change in the pore water pressure. Now, because when we have an undrained case, so we're doing, once again, we've done total stress, we're doing effective stress now, and we're going to get the same answer. When we're doing an undrained case, we mentioned that all the stress is felt by the pore water pressure. We get excess pore water pressure because all the applied stress is felt by the water. So we can say that the mean stress, the mean vo volume stress is equal to the change in the pore water pressure, which is just simply change in, which is just simply a third of change in total stress X plus change in total stress Y plus change in total, 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 total stress Z. Now we know from before that change in total stress X is 100 and went from 100 to 80, so it's minus 20. Change in Y went from 100 to 110, so it's plus 10. And change in Z went from 100 to 120, so it changed by 20, which means we can find our change in pore water pressure, which would be. One